Hello, people of science. Let's finish up our unit and let's talk about protein translation. So hopefully today I will finally answer those questions. Where are we going with all this and what does translation do? So we can kind of see the big picture, the final result of this. All right, we've already talked about DNA. Here's our little uh, cartoon of what DNA actually looks like. You can remember I compared it to a CAD drawing because it is information only. And then we talked about RNA. Here's our uh, little cartoon of that one as well. Remember, single-stranded, ribose instead of deoxyribose, U instead of T. That one was like our blueprint because it's instructions that make the assembly a little bit easier. So that process that we talked about already is called transcription, going from DNA to RNA. Well, today we're going to talk about that last part where you go from RNA to protein. Now remember, protein is composed of all those tiny little amino acids there. And remember, that's our finished product and it actually does something. And just to reiterate that point, that's the entire point of this, to make protein. This process of going from RNA to protein is called translation. So DNA is the information, RNA is assembly instructions, protein is what we are trying to build. All right, so let's compare transcription against translation. Transcription, as we said before, turns that DNA information into an mRNA temporary copy. So DNA to mRNA. So you remember this image before. That's my DNA in the background there. It's being split by RNA polymerase, and it makes that mRNA strand. That part took place inside the nucleus. Well, let's talk about translation. Translation is going to take that mRNA message and turn it into a functional protein. So it goes from mRNA into protein. So here is our ribosome, where protein assembly takes place. Here's the mRNA through it, and out of that is all those amino acids being built into a functional protein. This takes place in the cytoplasm of the cell. So I have this animation uh, in the description below, but I think it's worthwhile showing. Once again, here is my mRNA strand. It, you should know that because it's single-stranded, and I have U's in there instead of T's. I'm going to play this once without talking, just so you guys can kind of see the entire process. I'm still here. I'm just quiet. Kind of oddly quiet, isn't it? All right. I started with my mRNA copy. Nothing happened to it. And in the end, I have this thing right here. That's my protein. That's what I've been trying to build. More on that in a minute. All right. Let's talk about translation. Translation takes place in the cytoplasm at the ribosome. Perhaps you remember that before, but that is our protein-building factory. Here's my ribosome, and there's the mRNA stuck through it. So there's the ribosome, and mRNA has codons. You remember those before. Those are my three-letter words of RNA, like AUG, CGA, GGG. All of those are codons, words of RNA, that specify for amino acids. More on that in just a second. Now... RNA has four nucleotides, A, U, C, and G. Remember, U instead of T in RNA. However, protein is a different language. It has amino acids, and there are 20 of them. So what I'm left with here is a problem. I need to get between two languages. Well, how do you get between two languages? You need to translate. So in this case right here, we almost need a Google Translate or something to go from the language of RNA to the language of protein. Well, there is such a thing. This thing right here, it is found on page 367 in your book, or if you would prefer to scan the QR code, that will take you to a version of this as well. Now, uh, take a minute and look at the structure. There are three yellow rings, an inner, middle, and an outer, and then all the way around the outside, those are the amino acids. Here's how this works. You're going to start in that middle ring, the smallest one right here, and you're going to work your way out. Let's say I give you the example of UAC as my codon. I start with the U, and then I'm going to move out one row to the A, and then I'm going to move out to the final row to where it says C. So I go U, A, C, and that is going to code for the amino acid tyrosine. Those are all my amino acids on the outside. This is my translating dictionary. Here's how I go from that codon to those amino acids. 
So again, there's the QR code if you'd like to try this out of the book. Otherwise, you can just read it off of here. Uh, page 367 in your book. This might be a little bit larger if you want to scan that, though. So here are a few codons I'm going to give you. And I want you guys to pause the video right now. Pause now. 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 And uh, try some of these out on your own. So pause now. Okay. Hopefully now you've unpaused. So let's do this first one. C-A-G. So I just go C A. To G, that gives me glutamine. Next one, AAA. So I start with the, remember, start with the middle. A to A to A gives me lysine. Next one, GGA. G to G to A, glycine. Next one, GGU. G to G to U, also glycine. I want you to notice that you can get to this amino acid multiple ways. In this case right here, there's four right here. AUG, A to U to G gives you methionine. This one is different. Methionine right here is always found at the start of every protein. It's like the capital letter at the start of a sentence. When I'm looking at like that capital A that tells me, oh hey, a new protein is starting a new sentence. AUG and methionine is always the start of every sequence. UGA, U to G to A, and you'll notice that this one codes for a stop. And there's also another one here, UAA or UAG. Now, stop is kind of the opposite. It's always found at the end of every protein. It kind of acts like the period at the end of a sentence. That's how you know your sentence is done. You found a period. All right, let's talk about which one actually has the job of that codon wheel, and that is a molecule called tRNA, which we've mentioned before. tRNA has the job of translating between that mRNA and the protein. Here's my uh, tRNA, that AA up there is not Alcoholics Anonymous, American Airlines, or, or whatever. It's amino acid. And there's my tRNA. The tRNA's job is to carry that amino acid to the ribosome. So here's my ribosome, and watch as the tRNA goes and drops off the amino acid. It doesn't need to stay there. Think of it like a taxi driver. When the taxi driver takes you to your stop, it'd be weird if they came in with you. Like they took you from the airport to your house and then came in your house. That, that's a little forward for a taxi driver. Instead, the tRNA just drops it off and leaves. And then another tRNA will come on and drop off another amino acid and leave. And another tRNA drops off another amino acid and that leaves. So the job of the tRNA is just to drop those off. And those amino acids are going to build together one after another after another to build my protein chain, which, as you will remember, is the whole reason we're doing this. So the anatomy of the tRNA, as we already saw before, has a detachable amino acid head, and then at the other end of it are these three unpaired RNA bases, like it could be AUG or CUA or something like that. That collectively is called the anticodon. That should ring a bell because we talked about codons, which are our three-letter words. This goes opposite of that. So the tRNA can go and detach that amino acid head and then go out and get a new one. Protein synthesis happens via this process. Each tRNA drops off the amino acid to the growing protein chain. So the tRNA goes, drops off the amino acid, and then it will leave the ribosome and go pick up a new amino acid, and that process will repeat. Process continues until it reaches that stop codon, the UAA or the UGA or the um, UG, UAG. When you get there, it stops. Get it? I stop for UAA. If you wear that, that will be a joke that will be gotten by like 1% of the population. So you, you'll be like the ultimate hipster. So here's our animation, just another one right here. That is my mRNA, and then the ribosome actually assembles or builds around it. That is my tRNA right there. That's the amino acid, and that's the anticodon. And it pairs up together, and the rest of the ribosome assembles around it. Now, in comes the next tRNA with the next amino acid and forms what's called a peptide bond. Once it does this, it can now leave. Its job is done. It delivered it. Move on to the next one. CGG is going to pair up with GCC, going to form a peptide bond between those two amino acids, and it's going to leave. This entire process is going to repeat until when? Until it reaches a stop codon. So just et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, until we get to UGA, which is my stop codon there. 
when you get to here, there really is no tRNA for it. So in comes release factor. Don't worry about that part right there. But it basically says, hey, we're done. This is our period, end of protein, end of sentence. We're done. You can release the protein. It's all assembled. All right, let's look at this one more time and kind of go step by step a little bit more carefully now. So as you saw before, the ribosome assembles around there. Here's my tRNA. There's the amino acid and in it goes. So I've brought in my first one. Now next one I have this codon AAG but that's going to be opposite of that is going to be uh, UUC. In comes this next one here and AAG codes for the amino acid lysine. Now that it's in there I form a bond between those two peptides and I'm going to move on. The next one, U, 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 if I plugged it into my codon wheel, would give me phenylalanine. So I'm looking for the phenylalanine amino acids to come in, and it would, its anticodon would have to be AAA. There we go. It's like the Fonz. A. All right, I'm sorry. Some of you will get that joke. In any case, right here, I can form a bind between my two uh, amino acids there. Now three amino acids, and I can move on. GGC, the antitodon would have to be CCG. And here it comes, and it's going to bring a glycine. They are going to form another peptide bond, and it moves on. Until I get to UAA, which is my stop codon. That one does not specify for anything except a period at the end of the sentence to say release it. It's done. We built it. Good job. Remember, that's what we were trying to build. All right, so that's it, protein translation. Now you know the entire process, how we go from DNA to RNA to protein.